Okay. Can everyone see that clearly? Just yes, yes. Okay. So, um, just for a, an example, we have a black and white photograph here that I edited from uh, the Isle of Harris. This was all done in Lightroom. That was the starting image there. <clears throat> so that was the starting image and that's how it ended up. Okay, all done in Lightroom. Um, just to give you an example of what I'm going to be doing. One second now. Here's an image that I edited just a while ago. Um, and that's the start image. All done in Lightroom. Okay. Um, I suppose for me, um, <clears throat> when I go into Lightroom, um, here's one I edited again a while ago. That's the start image. That's not it, actually. So we'll just make another one. This is the start image. I'm just going to make a, a copy. So I usually just edited this from a while ago. Start image, and this is the way it was, you know? So <clears throat> there's quite a lot we can do inside in Lightroom uh, to improve our photographs. But if we know what... If we know what all of these sliders do, um, especially the shadows, the whites, the blacks, and the highlights, um, it will help us get the most out of our image. So I'm going to go to this very flat image now for the moment. <clears throat> uh, contrast, contrast is everything. So I just want to explain contrast. So contrast adds color if we push the contrast slider. It adds color and it flattens an image out. So you might have been inside in your camera club and someone had said to you, you have a very flat image. And, we, and what they mean is basically it's a bit washed out. That's contrasty. That's flat. Okay. Now, what we're doing when we push the contrast slider, if you look at the histogram, we're making the whites on this side whiter and we're making the blacks blacker. If you watch the histogram, it spreads in both ways. Like that. Okay. Now, the contrast slider is great, but it moves both the whites and it moves both the blacks together. I find that if I'm going to add contrast, I prefer to add it just to the white side, just like this. And you can see my image gets brighter. See the histogram moving? And if I move it... Uh, yeah. Rodney, I can't see the histogram. Uh, it's all... You probably have... You might have something over the histogram. Moved... All oh, uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just explaining contrast at the minute. So again, creating... And if you look at your histogram, you're creating a black point. So... That's uh, a flat image. Uh, the other thing is we're adding it globally. So we're doing all this adjustment globally. I don't want to add contrast to the whole image. I only want to add it to certain parts. So um, I like the contrast that's in the base of the image here, but I don't like it up there. <clears throat> so what I do in that instance, if you double click on anywhere, it takes the slider back to zero. I use quite a lot uh, when I start when I start an image, the first thing I do is I look at the white balance. And you can look at the white balance here. So that's how you captured it on the day. These are daylight cloudy. These are other settings. You can always try an auto. So auto warms it up a little bit. I'll just reset that. You can try the dropper. So just to explain how the dropper works, can you see these figures as I move around in the box? There's figures in the box and they're reading 63, 64, 67. So white balance is kind of determined. Our camera reads gray. I'm not gonna go into the whole concept of that at all, but you're looking for an average, an average mid-tone. And 
considering our histogram, it goes from zero to 100. So zero being black. So if you're anything black, so if you look down there, that's very dark. And that's reading about 18, 17, 19. And if we go to the highlights, that, that's reading 80, 88, 89, 80. So that's something that's very bright and something that's very dark. In between, so halfway would be 50. So there we go, we have, we have 58, 59, 60. If we can find something that's an average mid-tone, and the theory is if we click on that, we should get a color representation of what it was actually like. So in general, you're very good. You're very close if you go for a cloud. So we'll just click on that, a gray cloud. And that's given us another white balance. Now, that's nice, but it's a little bit warm from my liking. So, so in theory now, we have what's white should be white, but it's a little bit warm. So I'm just going to get the white balance slider, and I'm just going to pull it back down marginally just to take the, the warmth off it. Now, <clears throat> my editing style, how how I've kind of developed is I I like to draw the eye. So I like to draw the eye. I want to draw the eye here. So I always go in with a concept of where I want the viewer to go. In this instance, it's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken the sky. I'm going to darken the foreground and I'm going to lighten the middle. So if I have dark on top, dark on the bottom, and it's lighter in the middle, the viewer will automatically go to the brightest part of the image. And that's my concept of editing. That's basically how I think. So um, just bear with me now. And this is the concept that we're going to take through the rest of the images as we look at them. So I'm going to use a gradient filter. So before I go in there, I will just say, let's, re let's, let's reclaim a little bit of the highlights. Just the image is very good. It doesn't really need anything. So that's as much as I'll do there. That's globally. I'm not going to do anything anymore now globally. It's all going to be in different sections of the of the image. So I'm going to darken the sky. I'm not going to use this fellow now. This is this is a new one. I'll only use this in different in different parts of in different images. It it selects the sky. But in at at this moment. The sky is bleeding down over the is bleeding down over the mountain. So we're just going to do a linear gradient, same gradient that you would apply inside in when you're taking a shot, a graduated neutral density. We're going to darken the sky, and we might add a little bit of contrast. We're going to darken the foreground with another one. And again, this is just the concept now of how we're going to go about editing our images. So straight away now it's darker there, darker here and brighter in the middle. We're going to do another one in the sky. This time a bit of an angle. And we're going in the middle now we're going to brighten. So we're going to use a, a radial and we're going to come in here like that. Just turn it. No, I'm not going to use the exposure slider here quite simply because it just brightens it too much. I'm going to use, we spoke about contrast. What I'm going, so contrast does the whites and does the blacks. I only want the whites, so I'm going to push the whites. And it gives a kind of a feeling of light. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to come across here. I'm going to push the whites. We're going to do another one, a radial, and we're going to go outside, quite big. And we're going to inverse that now so, so that it only happens on the outside. No. We've drawn the eye. Um, so what's actually happening now is the image is gone a little bit flat. So with six uh, with six masks there, six just six gradients, we have changed the image entirely. We now have a focal point. 
uh, we're drawing the eye. We're drawing the eye where here there was an awful lot going on there. Now we have a kind of a focal point. I would also, it needs a bit of contrast now. So if I was to push the contrast slider, yeah, that's not bad. So what we'll do is we'll do the white slider and the black slider separately. The green is getting a little bit saturated. We won't worry about that because we're going to take down the saturation of the green separately. So that was a very quick edit. Um, and that came basically from you know a file that was very, very flat, not a whole pile happening in it. I've created directional light and drawn the eye to where I want the viewer to go. Does that make sense? Did you, would you like to come in there on that? <clears throat> Feel free to come in. Yes, that looks that looks very good. Mm -hmm. That looks not a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> very, very just a few tweaks inside in Lightroom. You know, yeah. no no need to go into Photoshop. Um as I say, draw the eye, kind of kind of work work out, I suppose, decide where you want the viewer to go, you know and you know dark and enlightened and that's the basis of how we're going to go forward um in editing images um i could open up the shadows just say let's say if, let's say if i open up the shadows and um, there's quite a lot of contrast if i open up the shadows it, it loses the feel for me it loses the mood you know mm -hmm. so um that's kind of where i'd be quite happy with that so again the concept here is um we have an image that there's not a lot going on the eye isn't falling anywhere so i want the viewer i want the viewer here now there is a little bit of light here and i know i can enhance that so my plan here is darken the sky Darken the foreground a little. Now I like to create I like to darken the foreground because um it allows me to kind of create what I call a step. And if you create a step, you're almost forcing the viewer to jump in over that and they're they're into the into the subject as I call it. And it creates kind of a, a 3D feel as well. You know, um it's M for mask. So it's it's basically there's no three dimension three dimensionality there. You know, if you darken the foreground, um, if you darken the foreground, you know, you're creating three three dimensional feel all the time. When we take our images, they are three D because that's the way we're looking at them. So I know I just have a message there, but when you're um when you get them on your computer screen, we can lose that. So the whole concept of editing is to get I suppose to get back the feel of the image when you were there, you know? Okay, so I am going to, I'll just edit this one quickly. And it's very, very quick. Um, This time I'm going to use the, the, the darkened sky, okay? Um, we'll use the darkened sky. So only because I want to change the whole exposure down here. So I select the sky. <clears throat> it's done it we'll take so there's the sky selected so we'll take the sky down a half a stop now i'm going to select this area so if we click here we can duplicate the mask and invert it and it selects the foreground okay so we're going to brighten the foreground so we've darkened the sky and brightened the foreground. So we're creating separation. I'm going to darken. I'm now going to darken the foreground. 
with a gradient. And that steps the viewer in. So we've, we've dark, bright, dark. I'm going to darken the sky. And now I'm going to brighten this area. I'm, going to, I'm just going to enhance that area with a radial gradient. Feel free to type away there now also with a few questions. So I am not, in general, when I brighten the areas, I push the whites. Um, I don't, I just type M. So M reveals the mask and makes it disappear. Uh, we just go back in there actually now. So I am just going to push the whites. And by pushing the whites, it enhances the light in there. It really makes the viewer feel that, you know, the light is streaming in there. And now we're going to do a radial gradient over the whole lot. I'm going to turn it. So for me, I basically, I'm going to invert that, just darken around the edges. Just like that. That's a um, that's sun flare, actually. And the overall image then, I would push the whites because I'm looking at the histogram here. So we'll just push the whites on the overall histogram. So we're starting to lose the sky now. Okay, so the sky is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a gradient filter. I'm going to do a gradient filter. And I'm going to push it up here. And I'm going to push the whites from more. Push the whites and a little bit of black for contrast. Yeah. Um, how would I deal with that? I actually don't use like I don't do we might use this for that. Just to get rid of that. And that one there. So yeah, that's that. Very, very simple. Um well, everything is simple when you know how. I appreciate that. Um, again, feel free if anyone wants to come in and comment on the before and after. Um, actually, that's that one. Oh, yeah. So we duplicate that. Create a virtual copy. And we just reset the other one. Yeah, so that's the image. You know, very, very simple. Probably what was a very, very flat image. <clears throat> I've now drawn the eye to the uh, to the building. And, you know, it's the same concept as the first one. Uh, you're probably going to look at my images now the next time you see one on posted on social media and you're going to you're going to know exactly what um, I've done and how how I've approached it, you know. And yeah, that's fine. I'm no problem at all in that. It's all about, you know, um, I am influenced by, uh, I, I look at people's work and I'm influenced by their work, you know, and I suppose I've just developed into this way of editing myself, you know. Um, okay. Let's have a look. So we'll just move along. We'll leave this one a while. Okay. Very flat image. How would I deal with that? So it's a very flat image. And as you can see by the histogram, um, I always tend to look at the histogram. Um, so it's full of mid-tones, basically, you know, and there's no black, so there's no whites, no deep whites. And if we were to shove the con, we could do this with the contrast slider. As you can see, the histogram is spreading both ways. Um, one way of dealing with an image that's quite flat, <clears throat> as it's mostly mid-tones, um, you have a clarity slider. Now, I have to say, um, when I first started photography, uh, I was probably a demon for this slider. 
I probably think everyone is, to be honest. So what clarity does is it adds contrast in the mid-tones, as you can see. Does a great job. No, that would that would work very well. I often use clarity for black and white. Um, in this instance, D Hayes does a great job. You know, does a great job. Now, you can also see there. I've added D Hayes, but it's made the image very blue. What you can do. Don't be concerned about colors that are introduced if they get very heavy. Just come down. To, to the color mixer um, do the HSL just come down and if it's gone too blue just take out the blue just take out the blue just bring it back you know that's what I do um, so that is uh, contrast has anybody any questions can you still all hear me? We can indeed. Uh, yeah. I like that workflow a lot. It's very good. Yeah, it's just nice and simple. Who am I talking to there, actually? Peggy here, yeah. Oh, Peggy, how are you? Yeah, thanks. And it's just, I, I think the biggest thing is not to, not to overthink it and not to think that you have to do a whole pile to the image, you know. Um, but for me, these are the important ones here, you know. I rarely go, I rarely go through, I rarely touch vibrance or saturation because I'm adding those through contrast. So I'm amazed that you use the black and the, the blacks and the whites to push the, the contrast instead of using the contrast slider. Yeah. So it's much, actually, much better, doesn't it? Well, you've more fine tune because you're with the contrast slider, you're you're shoving the both of them. And yes. you've no you have so the blacks and the whites are going equally. But if you come down and do the blacks and whites separately, you have a little bit more control, do you know? Yes, that's fair, I'm sure. So, I mean, let's say, for instance, we wanted to add contrast here, okay? Uh, let's say we pick a radial filter and we come in. I just want to get rid of that bloody mask. Oh, I have a tick there, look. Yeah, so I have a tick there. So we'll just don't tick that. So we want to add contrast there. So say we push the, con we push the contrast slider. That's what happens. Okay. Say we push that fucking thing is back again. Say we push them separately. We probably we definitely have a little bit more control. Now I'm going to show you the equivalent of of this inside in in Photoshop. Sorry, okay. sorry, Ragni, just one question there. You you didn't use uh vignetting or v in any of them. No, because I'm I'm using I'm using the vignetting Tom with the radial filters. I'm nice. creating I'm I'm using so let's say okay, so if I was to use the uh radi if I was to use the vignette here now, um I'm I'm stuck to the outside. So where is it? Uh I actually don't use it at all, Tom. That's why you can't down, down at the bottom. Is down there. <clears throat> so okay. No, we're stuck. We're stuck on the outside. Mm. Okay. So we'll just reset that. But the beauty about using these boys is we can put the vignette anywhere we want. Say we only want to vignette the sky. Mm. So it's happening. Everything that's happening now. The, any adjustment that I make at the moment now is happening in the red zone, in the mask. I want it to happen outside, so I want to affect the sky. So we just invert that. And now that adjustment is only going to happen. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Less exposure, yeah. And the sky. Uh, generally, I'd make that much bigger. And it should just happen. And the sky. We have much more control, if that makes sense. So let's sit, let's say I'm just going to pull the eye here with vignettes. And I'll show you then. So I'm going to brighten this area. We're going to add a bit of white, small bit of black. 
going to darken down the front slightly. So I want I want the viewer here. So the only way of getting the viewer there is to darken around it. Okay. Now we're stepping in over this and we're straight to the castle. And don't be afraid of, you know, I tend to, so I tend to do lots, very small adjustments. And let's look at the overall image. So we could probably push the whites on the overall image. Push the blacks. Highlights taken down. That's our castle is hot now. It's uh, it's a bit blue. So it's a bit blue. We'll just go down and take out the blue. Get it back to gray. Do you know? Um, castle is very bright now on that actually. So let's reset that. And let's apply the same tonal work, okay? When I say tonal work, I mean, um, let's apply the same adjustments where we're going to adjust a black point and adjust a white point inside in Photoshop. And this basically is the very same as doing a levels adjustment. Um, let me get an image now that might take a little bit better. Uh, we'll just go with this one, actually. So I'll reset. Edit in. So this is where, uh, who was it? It was Seamus, actually, we were, I was talking to earlier. This is where um, you can do more work, I suppose, more um, more, more fine-tuning inside in Photoshop. So levels. So the levels adjustments, uh, don't worry about this panel. I'll work off it here. So the levels adjustments are found... So primarily they're found up here. Filter. Was it image adjust? Is it layer? Image adjust. So primarily your adjustments are found here. Image adjust. The only problem with doing an adjustment here is there's no kind of you can't, you're stuck with it on the whole image. And we do a levels. And we can see from from the histogram. So taking your histogram. On the left hand side, this is your black point, and on the right hand side, this is your white point. This is the same histogram that's on the back of your camera that I hope you're all looking at when you take your photographs. Um, so it's very important, I suppose, especially for this side of the histogram where we have the highlights, that you know, when we're capturing an image, that we keep we keep this back from once it touches the upright there, look, once it touches the end. The only way I can describe it is. White is at this end and black is at this end. If that line touches the edge here and starts to climb, then you have white paper. Is there any detail in white paper? No, there isn't. So um, that's what I say to people. You have white paper on the back of your screen. You have no detail whatsoever. So all the time, when when we are when we are taking our pictures, when we're capturing the image, <coughs> we must be mindful that we don't start climbing up here because we're losing detail. Also, I would say to you, you must keep an eye on it when you're editing also, because if you know, it's very important. So it's quite evident that we have an image that's full of mid-tones, and we can see that. We have, no, we have no black point. But if we start to move the black point here, we're introducing, we're, what, we're, what we're doing actually is we're telling Photoshop to make the, the darkest pixels take them more towards black. So we're bringing over the black slider. And as you can see, look at all the contrast that we're now creating. And your image that was flat now isn't flat anymore. Okay. The history slider, if we get it up. Uh, oh, yeah, I have, to, I have to commit to that, actually. So if we go, okay. So that's the way we were when we opened. And that's just by adjusting the black point. So I'm not so sure could I get the same thing here inside in Lightroom by adjusting, um, we'll have a look. 
So basically all we did was we moved the black point. Okay. And if you watch the histogram, we probably have a black point now that's very close to the end. There's lots of little tips and tricks now that we can do. Um, so we'll just look at the two. Yeah, they're very close, very close. So basically that's equivalent to your moving your black point and moving your black point is the very same as doing an adjustment in the levels. Um, now, that adjustment has been completed. I think we can use the history brush to rub out pieces of it. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to go a step back. No, say for instance, we want to make an adjustment. Or we like parts of it, but we don't like other parts of it. This is where we need to make an adjustment on an adjustment layer. So don't be frightened now about this. It's very, very simple. I'm going to, this is the, this is the first thing that I learned when I moved to Photoshop was how to do a levels adjustment. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So how to do a levels adjustment and only keep the parts of it that you actually want. So say I don't like the sky. And it's dark in the sky now, and I don't like it. So the adjustment that we have made, this is it here. So it's now an adjustment on top. We can take up and down the opacity of that of that adjustment to allow us to see through. We can leave it at whatever percentage we like. But we like the bottom of it here, but I don't like the top of it. So quite simply, we're going to just say you had a paintbrush or you had a, like an eraser, we're going to brush out the top of it. We're just going to brush it away. So over here, you have your paintbrush just here. Or if you hit B, B for B brings up the brush. And this is the very first thing I learned. So our adjustment is white. So our brush is set to black just there. And if we make the brush nice and big and we just brush, we brush away the part of the image that we don't want. And I'll just hit Alt and I click on the mask. So we've just basically brushed away the top half of the image. And basically that's layers in explained. If, if you want it back again, if you say, oh God, I made a mistake, I want to get it back, you just change, you change this brush here, change the color of the brush back to white. Now you have white. And now you just brush the adjustment back in. Just very, very simply. And for anyone that wants to get started in layers, that's the best way to learn. Um, I wouldn't go into any more now tonight on layers or anything like that. But if you want to learn layers, that's the best and easiest way to learn. Make an adjustment, pick your brush, and if your mask is white, you need to change it to black, and just brush in the parts, or brush away the parts that you don't want, basically, and just work on getting them back again. Okay, so that's the beauty of working on a layer. Does anyone, would anyone like to come in um, on there? So we just don't save that, and we go back into uh, Lightroom. Now, just see who's there, actually. Uh, so who have we? So David, Mary, Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, Rodney. How are you? Keith, how are you doing? Welcome. Uh, the session is going to be recorded, so for anyone that missed the start of anything, don't worry, it's all going to be recorded. Okay, there's no problem there. Uh, Jane, Annette, Conway, Dunica, hello Dunica, Siobhan. Okay, um, if there's anything that anyone would like to see in particular, just type, type, and um, I think there should be a chat there. And... Um, Okay. <coughs> so uh, this is an image 
that I made in uh, Lewis and Harris. And actually, we we had we, we were rained off for a couple of hours one morning. Um, so I I decided to edit this image downstairs in one of the conference rooms. And so this is the starting point. And this is this is the finishing point, more or less. And I might have taken it into Photoshop and taken it to there. So I'm going to edit this image. Um, hmm. The one thing about editing is, you know, there's no there's no set way. There's uh, I it could be very unlikely now that I'll be able to reproduce this again. Because it's all on the day, you know, it's all uh, everything affects how you edit, you know, even if you're doing no matter what job you're doing, uh, I suppose your mood, everything, if you're tired or if you're if you're energetic. So you're never going to get the same picture twice. So I am not sure if I can produce this, but I'll have a damn good go. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, there's lots of plugins now available for, for all all these to make it very simple. One is silver effects, but I'm just going to, as I say, do the old fashioned way. And I'm just going to desaturate, um, which is there. So we have a black and white image. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take up the contrast to see what parts of the that's exposure, what parts of the image look good with contrast. Yeah, that's nice. And then I'm going to come in manually. So there's a nice shape to the house. Okay. So I'm going to do my darkening and lightening to bring the viewer to the house. Get out of the way over there. I think the biggest issue with editing is is knowing where to start and maybe what to do. Hopefully. Okay, I'll darken the foreground. Hmm. I'm gonna there's nice light here, so I'm going to enhance that. I'm just gonna push the whites. To enhance that. I'm gonna Take down the brightness here. Take the eye away. I'm going to open the shadows on. Just to reveal the gable there. Slightly. And boom. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity to the front of the house. Just punches it out as well. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. Do you remember I said clarity is a mid-tone contrast? Just a little bit there. I'm going to do an overall radial. Tom, this is your vignette now again. An overall radio. Going to have more control over it. And we're going to invert that. Make it happen on the edges. So it's only just the edges there, look. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer. I'm going to add more white in here now. Add more white. Stand out. I'm a bit high with the white there because I don't want it going up in maybe just there. I don't want the white that being affected. Better. We can and another one. We can just just take that area down. There maybe. Again, it's just by feel. I'm gonna darken the sky. Let me just pull it at a bit of an angle. Oops. 
it out here. A lot more contrast than that. So there's a lot darker around the edges. I, I think one of the biggest issues I have when I edit, and I might edit something, and I might really like it, uh, especially if it's a color image, and I'd say, okay, if I post that, no, really, it wasn't, it wasn't what it was like, you know, it wasn't, you know, but, you know, this is where we have to kind of say to ourselves, you know, who are we editing for? If you like it, and I'm going to push the inside there now. If you like it, and a bit of, and a bit of clarity there, actually. Well, that's quite nice, actually, a bit of clarity there. And I'm going to add a little point just here, just to bring a bit of light to the gate. Just like that. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, I don't know how long that took me. But obviously, I've edited this image before. Yeah, that's it. No, you know, I, <clears throat> there is a lot of blacks in it. If you look there, you can see there's a lot of blacks in the foreground. Uh, one more thing that I'm starting to do quite a lot, actually. I tend to fade out the blacks and I can't do it here now by lifting that. No, I can't. The only way of doing that now is doing it by a whole. So if I want to fade out the blacks, just in total, just fade them out. I can apply a curve and we can just lift the black point up. So we're fading the blacks. You can see they're actually the deep blacks are fading. It gives more like a filmic look. So you have no deep blacks. You just bring that down here slightly. It just gives a softer feel to a black and white image. Um, if I was to go back into history there, if I can find it, history should be there. Um, oh yeah, hit done. So if I was to go back into history, just there, You can see the blacks are a little bit uh, deeper. It's a little bit softer there. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, it's very, it's very minimal. But if you're printing and you don't want any deep blacks, uh, it's important that you know your histogram shows that little bit of a gap there. And you can see I have big tonal values here. So I mean that's that's a histogram that's that's a grey histogram basically you know from black to white. Does anyone want to come in there on that? I noticed you adjusted the size of the inner circle there. Um, how did you do that? Oh you know, yeah, so the inner circle, David. It's basically just that's just the feather. That's the feather. So I'll just make a, an example there. So we will uh we'll, we'll do a radial. Um, do another radio, and um, we just make an adjustment, and it's basically just the you grab it there, so that's the feather. So that's that's a hard adjustment. There you go. All right, that's a hard adjustment. Actually, that's a soft adjustment. Okay, what we'll do is we we'll, we'll, we'll brighten. So that's which one was it? I'll do it on another image actually, David. We'll do it in this one. That's just a feather. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll just I'll just demonstrate that there now. So we'll make the adjustments that should be happening inside. And the tighter we put that on the outside. See the top, okay? Yep. So that's basically your your feathering. All right. So the smaller you have it, the you know the the softer the the feel is going to be. Um. <clears throat> so this image, 
Um, when I when I shot this, I would have exposed for the highlights. Um, and that highlight would be that bar of light across there. It's that bar of light there. Um, you know, if you blow, I suppose you all are well aware that if you if you if you if you lose highlights, they're gone. They're gone. You know, and you can't get them back. You know, if you, if you have white paper on the back of the, uh, as I say, if you have white paper on your histogram on the back of your camera, no amount of post processing will get it back. So I exposed this for that shaft of light, but obviously everything else goes a little bit dark. Um, it was brighter than this, um, but the dynamic range of the camera, that's what I'm able to capture. So I'm going to adjust this one. Um, first things is we will just pull back the highlights a small bit and open the shadows a little bit. That's as much as I generally do don't do a whole pile. So I'm basically flattening out the image so that I can add contrast back in after, if that makes sense. So um, there's a nice dramatic sky. There's a lovely shaft of light coming down there. So I'd like to enhance this maybe with a diagonal. The tar process will be to enhance that with a diagonal uh, radial filter. I also want to brighten the foreground. So the first thing we will do is we will brighten the foreground. And with a linear. Brighten the foreground. For anyone that's after coming in late there now, uh, this is being recorded. Uh, I just hope it's still going. Oh, there's chat actually. I haven't seen that. get the chat. Ken Collins, do you use filters in the fielders at all in post? Uh, yes, David, I do. Um, it just, I suppose, when it's a grab shot like this, um, it, it's all just exposed for the highlights. But I do use, if I'm set up, I will, of course, use um, use filters in the field. Pete, would you ever reduce highlights to darken the sky? If so, when would that be better? Would you ever reduce highlights to darken the sky? If so... Would you be um no, I don't because I suppose I I'm I want to retain that brightness in the sky. How uh, to if you would you reduce highlights to darken the sky? Um let me just cover that there now. Would you ever reduce highlights and oh well, that's the same? Okay. So let's go in there and let's just say we work in the sky for that one. I suppose that's the thing about post-processing. Everyone has such a different way of doing things. So um, let's say we reduce the highlights there. dark in the sky so the highlights really will only affect that area. They won't kind of affect that area. Um, I actually quite like the highlights there now. Um, what I might do after that is I might just brighten that area slightly by pushing the whites just to balance it out. Um, as mentioned, I, I put a radial filter in here. And I might stretch that out because we only want that to fade in so I know my dogs are coming in there okay I want to darken that slightly now um okay so we have that there we can subtract so I'm going to subtract just that. So what I've done is I created a radial filter and it also brightened the whites here. So what I've done is I've just subtracted um I've just subtracted the bit that it brightened too much basically. Um we'll just give the image a bit of contrast just to see where it stands and how we might go forward in editing. 
Oh, that's very dramatic. Okay, so we'll give it a bit of drama in the sky. Give it a bit of clarity. Bit of drama. I want to just try and draw the viewer to here. Invert that. Apologies, I didn't see the questions there and all, but there's another one. No message. Tom Dunno, give an example of using the color gradient. The color gradient in Lightroom. Uh, I never use it, Tom. I never add color. Um. I can give an example, but uh, I never use it. Um, it's not something I do. Um, I actually don't know why you'd even use it. The only thing, the only reason you might use it is if you had a, if you had a, if you had the color, the color gradients. So you're talking about well, actually. Do you want to come in there, Tom? I actually don't understand what you're talking about. Well, it, it's, it's it's one of the features in Lightroom, as you know. And um, sometimes I play around with it, but I never know how to use to get the best out of it, really. Is it the colour range? Well, it's the colour gradients. They're like three these, circles. These, oh. these boys here. So you're you're saying apply a gradient. Apply Not a gradient a, with, with a colour. No, it's you have to go down along on the right-hand side, and it's colour... If you come out of where you're in, you yeah. won't see it where you're in now. So we're not using a gradient? No. So come out of there. Yeah, go down along. You see them there, the three balls there. Down. Oh, yeah. No, that's color that's grading. Yeah. Color grading. Yeah, I can do that, Jeff. Yeah, that's color yeah. grading. Yeah. Yeah, so color grading is basically where you want to add... Um, you can create different fields, and actually, probably this image is 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 a good example. So, generally, I would say it's not something I do quite a lot. But if I was to add blue to the shadows, say for instance, the opposite side of blue is yellow. So generally, when you color grade, if you were whatever color you give, you give the opposite side of the color wheel say to the highlights so say if we were to go we were to go blue we were, we were to give a slight blue so so that's the blue so we don't want all that blue we only want so we're adding blue to the shadows because we're tinting so just about there i say see it's giving a nice blue in there now and so these where are the highlights these are the highlights so say we're going to go yellow in the highlights but we're only going to go merge now And that's basically how you color grid. Uh, you can go as mad or as soft as you want. Like if I was to color, obviously color grading the highlights next to the blue wouldn't work. It, it color grading works better if you're opposite, opposite, opposite on the color wheel. Um, what about the midtones? Need the midtones a bit of yellow. Just leave that alone. If you double click, then you can take up and down the shadows. So you can brighten the shadows, take them down. Adds a nice feel, actually. Say the highlights. That's the brightness of the highlights. That's color grading, Tom. Does that explain that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's okay. okay thanks. And I think if you hit the arrow key, see, hit if you hit the arrow key, look, if you hit the arrow up key, it allows you to pull it in a straight line then, and you can go up or down as much as you want. You might even be able to hit the slider, no, or the arrow. You can go up and down nice and handy. You kind of pick your hue. So pick the hue that you want. Go all the way around. Pick the hue that you want. You're going to settle in a blue. And then just hit the arrow key. And go up or down then to add that subtly if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. if it works, if it works for you, then 
keep an eye here, look. If it works for you, so you've shadows, shadows 17. You see that you've added, that's that, that's the figure you've added, L minus right. 4. So if it's something that works for you, keep a note on those figures. And if you look over there, you have S19 plus 78. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are the figures then you want to dial in the next time. Do you know if that makes sense? If you have something that works for you, you can also create a preset. Uh, so creating a preset, I'm going to talk about that actually. So let's just say, um, have we anything to create a preset? Yeah, okay. So let's just say, what's that? Let's say we create a preset. We'll do one on this, all right? And what we'll do then is we'll break for a few minutes and we'll let everybody come in and talk. Okay, so I'm going to create a preset. So I'm going to hit reset there. So we're going to we're going to say we're making it we're making adjustments to an image that we like, okay? And it's very important if if you have a series of images that are very similar that you can apply that same look. But you're not editing them all slightly different, you know, with different colors, especially if you want to output them as a batch. So let's just say we'll add a bit of contrast. We just don't worry about the editing this now. We'll just add a bit of contrast. We're going to add um, a gradient. I'm going to darken again all with getting close getting drawing the eye to the middle i'm going to darken that and say we're going to add in a radial this is just a bit mad note but don't worry about it it's just that we can apply this same thing to another image okay so we we're happy with that uh, and we go back. So, what we're going to do is you go over here to presets. So we like that, and we have a whole series of, Im of images that we want to apply that to. So we hit plus, create preset, and it's very important that you hit the masking there, and you include the masks that you just made, and you hit create, and we're going to call it. Um, uh, we're going to call it zoom. Uh, zoom preset. Uh, it's going to be in a group. Uh, we make a new group, new group, and we call it Zoom. And we create that. And create. So if we come over here now under users presets, uh, have we taken an hour to find it? We should have there. We have. Zoom, and inside in Zoom, we have a Zoom preset. So say, for instance, if I go to uh, if I go to this image, and I hit Zoom preset, it applies. OK? So if you, if you have a look that you like and something that you've created, obviously doesn't work on this, um, you know, you can just apply that. There. Obviously, very heavy handed. You, what you can do then is say if yeah I kind of half like the feel of it you go in and you can make adjustments you know and it kind of gives you um, a starting point if that makes sense okay so what we'll do is we'll break there for 5 or 10 minutes and if people want to come in and chat it would be great I won't stop sharing now, so I'll just stop sharing. I hope to God it's still recording. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's still recording, yeah. It's happened to me before. <clears throat> so it'd be great to hear thoughts if anyone wants to come in. Don't be shy. <clears throat> Rodney, I would like to see your color grading on that color photographs is it, is it better for that or um <clears throat> color grading yeah i'll i'll try and uh i'll pick one there in a minute tom that will color grade a little bit more yeah. yeah yeah as i say it's 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 a it can create a you could be looking at an image for quite a while and you kind of say mm, it, it needs something you know we're all, all looking at images and we're, we're not quite sure but you say yeah they definitely need something you know and Maybe it's just a small little bit of color grading. You know, you can just do one color. You don't have to do two. 
you know it's it's a matter of fiddling around really with color grading you know there's a few things on Lightroom recently isn't there there is um to do okay let me see i'll have a look i'll come back to you right go ahead yeah no you're fine um i mostly use capture one actually um but i um for the purpose of this um i i suppose the, the probably the main um the main one now is Adobe Lightroom, to be honest, you know. Um, and, uh, what is everyone else using there? Are you, is everybody using Lightroom? Are you using uh, Capture One? Are you using Luminar? Um, what are people using? Instead of Lightroom, I use um, Adobe Camera Raw and then Photoshop. Yeah, and it's the, it's the same, same thing, really. Yeah, ex the exact same thing, Peggy. Only Lightroom is probably better for cataloging, and it's a manager, really. That our that's our Lightroom is. The only it's problem with organizing, yeah, yeah. The only problem with Lightroom is it can really take a lot of space in your computer when, when you get images in there in catalogs, you know. Mm. Um, a bugger for that, like that's the only. Um, I like the way you do um adjustments in areas like 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 globally like you say it's great to be able yeah. to do little areas at a time do you think you'll look at that going forward oh definitely yeah 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 it's just little adjustments and you know um uh, i suppose that's kind of where i might be doing something different next year you know but it's the whole it's it's i suppose i want to draw my eye i want to draw your eye and i suppose when i'm when i look at an image the first thing I kind of say to myself, what is what am I looking at? Where does the viewer guide me? You know, and if, if an image if an image is very bright mm -hmm. and there's no focal point, you're not going to be looking at anything. You know, it's important for the viewer that when they look at your image, that straight away they it's it's impact where you want them to go. You know, um, and we don't need to we don't need to do huge editing at all to to get. To get to that, you know. Sorry, there's a heat here. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to stuff again. It even looked like you were adding light, Rodney, when you brightened an area. You yes. know, it looked, yeah, yeah, it was lovely. Yes, but I didn't up the exposure. I only up the whites. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, um, it's important, you know, that you, I suppose you just play around, you know, but this, mm -hmm. I suppose, Anyone that comes to me and they want to do editing, it's kind of where I, you know, start off. You you don't need to know the A to Z of Lightroom. You don't need to know the A to Z of Photoshop. The same as your camera. You just need to know, I suppose, how to get the picture in your camera. Um, as we all know, starting off, once you can once you can capture an image, you know, everything you start to progress after that. You can find out what each button does in your camera. But the main thing is take control and know how to brighten and darken. And in Lightroom, it's small steps. You know, I, I know that well myself. Uh, I'm trying to learn video editing and it's really small steps for me. So I'm kind of really back at the start of it and I know how difficult it is, you know. Rodney, what I was asking about there in Lightroom is called Lens Blower. I just seen it recently on. Oh, geez, yeah, that's a new thing now, Tom. I haven't gotten near it. It's, it's basically, I think it's basically like, um, it's just like depth of field. How you, oh. can, how you can create a more, so how you can create a more natural depth of field, you know, basically. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I just seen it recently and I know it. Yeah. Basically, it's it's just depth of field. If you had a group shot, you know, oh. and you could, you could darken or uh, you could darken or you could just lens blow around them really for a natural look. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, Rodney, um, I know I said there earlier, you know, that I usually use uh, Photoshop. I knew to, to Lightroom, but certainly I thought, you know, what you showed there in Lightroom, it seems very straightforward, very simple compared to doing some of the stuff in Photoshop. Yeah, and you can move, you can move into Photoshop then, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. To yeah. Find, to find I'd, I'd use, I'd normally use, like, you capture one, you know, for the, yeah. the raw and then into yeah. Photoshop. But yeah, I'd certainly explore, explore uh, Lightroom a bit more, I think, yeah. Yeah, definitely just shape, you know, shape the image, you know, and as I said, like with the very first image, we don't have to, um, I'll just share the screen again there. Uh, like with the very first, is that screen sharing now, is it? No. Not seeing Lightroom, okay. Yeah. Uh, ooh. One second now, where are you going to? Right. There's a loop a whole second lot here now. Uh, screen share. 
um like with the very first image there as i say like that was kind of my thought process that we just you know we um how we can shape how we can shape an image how we can shape a flat image to draw the eye you know so yeah. don't ever be concerned about having a flat image and that might work in black and white also i don't know and just so now just for instance you can see that in black and white there i could go a lot harder let's say on the sky so let's say we give it a bit of clarity and i can go an awful lot harder on the sky Is there anybody out there now who's totally new to this and who is last? That's what I would like to know. Or is there anyone that feels, you know, um, it's not as daunting now as what you, um, what you thought it was? It's just very nice to see your approach, Rodney. Really, that's that's what I like about. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think you know, like when you look at an image. You know, sometimes the thing is, what do I want to do with it? You know, that kind of way. Exactly, yeah. Where do I start? What do I want to do? You know, and as I say, like the way Adobe have this set up, <clears throat> what they what they kind of, the way they have it set up is they want you to come in, they want you to look at the color, the tint, they want you to go through this down the line. That's kind of the way they have it set up, you know, yeah. um, and apply your finishing touches. Um, but, you know, we don't... I I've I've never worked like that. I've I've never worked like that. Um so let's say we have just to go to this image here. So it's a very, very um just minimize that down. So I'm just going to reset this to show you the way it was. Okay. That's the way it, that's 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 the raw file. So this was taken above in the burn. Um, it was a case of where I, I landed and um, I didn't have time to put on my filters because you can see this is all very slippery. And um, it was a case of just exposed for the highlights. And if you look at my histogram again, uh, if I would say to you, I would say to anybody, you know, for brightness level, unless you had a grad there in the sky that would hold it back, you have to expose for the highlights. You can't lose the highlights. And this is your histogram on the back of your camera that you must be looking at. Okay. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> now the other thing is there, I have a very low ISO. Okay. I want to explain about ISO actually before we go any, any forward. Um, I have a couple of images there from Venice. Okay. No. Um, it's... It's an image, it's underexposed, right? It's taken at 4,000 ISO. Can you see that? Yeah. Well, now it looks okay. Um, we'll just reset it. So I'm gonna start taking taking it up. It still looks okay, right? That would be passable, all right? But if we go to here, now look at it. Oh, yeah. Noise. Oh, yeah. Noise, okay? So <clears throat> to combat noise, um, at night time um, or in lower light <clears throat> we must make sure that our, I was shooting a handheld I was actually I was with a workshop and they were all set up and I was just capturing the odd shot out of my hand um, you must make sure that you're shooting at the lowest possible ISO so the lowest possible ISO will give you your best quality here we have signal noise you know it's really really noisy um, so that image would be fine until you actually start to go doing anything with it, especially if you opened the shadows, then you're in trouble. On the other hand, I have an image here that's underexposed also, right? It's very well underexposed. It's actually, it's even burnt out in the sky, look. But if I open the shadows on this, and I zoom in, you know, there is no noise. And if you look at the ISO, the ISO is 50. Okay, right. so there's no noise at all in it, virtually nothing, and that's because I used my lowest ISO. So if you're out shooting at night time, you know, and you have a tripod, you know, um, 
I would say to you, you know, use the best quality ISO you can if you're going to try and get detail out of shadow areas. All right. That's that that's just I hope that's noise explained. And that's even on the uh, Fuji camera, Tom. That's the medium format. And even a medium format at 4,000 ISO, um, there was still a bucket of noise there inside in. And Rodney, would you use the denoise to get rid of that noise? Uh, denoise, no. I, I I looked at it, actually, yeah. Uh, it did absolutely nothing for it. It wouldn't. We, what we'll do is we'll take it in, look. So that's the noise. We'll just see what it does. Okay, so who am I talking to there? Who was? Marion. Marion, how are you, Marion? So, um... I suppose what you can do, uh, Lightroom now has a good denoise. There's also another one called uh, Topaz denoise. Um, I think in the denoise in Lightroom, before you make any adjustments, you have to apply the denoise. Uh, and I think it's down here. Is it under Enhance? Detail, I think. Detail, yeah. That will tell you no time. I don't use it. Uh, yeah. There it is. So what we'll do, and what, what, what will happen is... Lightroom will make a copy. We'll just run it. Uh, my computer's quite fast now, so um, so what we'll do is we we'll leave it at fifty. Um, oh, and we'll just run that, okay. And we will just open it in, and we'll just see what the difference is. Um, okay, so this is the one that was denoised. I'll take my hat off if I had one. It's a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. Still there, Still but it's, it's a lot better than what it was. So if we take that, if we take the other one up to four, four and a half. Yeah, that's Christ. You can't use that at all, anyway. Yeah. That's not bad. It's not bad, no In fairness, yeah. It's very impressive. So you probably would even wouldn't be using it there. You'd be taking it down to oh, there. The only thing is it's it's kind of a bit squeegee. It's kind of a bit soft, you know. You can see kind of the edges in here are kind of a bit squeegee, but it, it's usable, you know. Um, but in general, I would say to you always try and get the uh, always try and get the um get the best quality files, you know. Um Let's just have a look at the white balance on this as we are. So I've just taken down the highlights. Um, we'll try an auto. Okay. That's not bad. Um, there is one other way of getting the white balance. And if you take up the vibrance and the saturation to 100, it lets you see where the color is. So there's a very dominant blue. And there's a there is there is a yellow there is a yellow as well. So so if we bring it more towards blue, it gets slightly it, it takes the yellow off the buildings. The buildings are very yellow. Can you see what I'm saying here? So there's more blue. Yeah. There's an awful lot of yellow. So it's the yellow is actually dominant. The yellow is very dominant. So if we bring down the yellow. Just introduce a little bit more blue so it's a little bit cooler now so there's a slight so we have cooler areas and bright areas if we double click now and take those back now we have a very natural color if that makes sense color is very yeah. natural so there's a nice balance of blue there's a nice balance of yellow and um, if we were to say make a copy so you can make a copy you can make as many copies as you want uh, create a virtual copy and if we were to just reset that just to see what the white balance was oh fuck excuse me no, this is... and pick the two of them so if you can hold two images together and if you hit n on the keyboard it shows the two of them together on the screen so two very different white balances uh, this is the one i kind of did manually and this is the one that's very, it's kind of overpowering yellow, if you can see it. So the colors here are are much more apparent. You know, you have an orange and you have a yellow there. Here, here there isn't much color separation between the orange and the yellow. So does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And what I was looking for was 
um, the dominant. So I reduced. I reduced the dominant uh, color basically. So we'll just re we'll just do it again. Just take the shadows. So the dominant hue is yellow. The, yeah. dom the dominant hue, and we can see that by taking up the saturation and, and the color, and we just reduce the hue here. That should do it, and reset. Much more balanced. Yeah. Great. It's a great way of uh, working your white balance. Okay, so um, what have we got? Venice. Uh, Venice. Sorry, there's one here from Venice actually. So, just wanted to show you as well that you you don't have to make huge adjustments. So this is the raw file. That's the way it was. That's the way I made. It. That's the way it was captured. So if we look at the histogram, um, again, which is what I was keeping an eye on, and if you look at my ISO, my ISO is fifty. So I kept my ISO down. So um, I basically will have no noise in the shadows, completely clean. So that's why that was kept on. Um, also, I exposed it for the highlights. It would be very hard to use a graduated filter here because the graduated filter will come down into the buildings. Okay. So if we were to look at exposure, uh, I'm happy with the way the sky is. I'm happy with the exposure there. If I was to look at the exposure for the buildings, I would like to see a little bit more of the buildings on the left and on the right. This is the way I evaluated the image. Now, by brightening that, the image is on both sides, I also brighten the middle, the foreground. So I really don't want to lose that lovely, that lovely glow there. So what I did was quite simply, um, if I open the shadows, I'm starting to flatten this out here also. I'm getting detail back, but I'm starting to flatten it out. So what I did was I used my friend again, the radial filter. So I might just adjust the exposure now slightly here, just very see. I'm starting to lose the sky there, and if I do that, so I like the sky. We're going to leave the sky alone, and we're going to adjust everything else. We're going to use. Radial filters, and we're just going to drop them in. And we're just going to bring back some detail. Subtly. And again, it's a matter of how much you want to reveal yourself, you know, everyone is different. How's the match going? Does anybody know? Or is it only just started? They were in the lead. Ten, ten, I looked on the rugby, but they were in the lead at the start. I don't know. After 10, 10, 10 nil after 20 minutes. Very good. Can you see how I'm just starting to bring it back there? And this is just my way of doing it. You know, um, it's like Lightroom and Photoshop. There's loads of different ways of doing things. You might say it's a bit tedious, but yeah, uh, um, who's that? A brush, is it? Yeah, would you ever use a brush? I, I don't. I, I don't, Tom, because I, I, I don't want to be filtering out the edges and things, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I like to keep things nice and kind of soft and just as if they were being touched, you know, by that there was light maybe just, just getting in there enough to, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I see the point, yeah. Yeah, I, I, and I just like to have things nice and soft and kind of feathered and nothing too harsh. Or you could put a, you could, you could put a, a, um, a brush on now. Um, I didn't do as much as this now the last time, but what we'll do now is we'll do one long one here. The one long one here.
might just darken the sky slightly just a whole bit no give it a bit of contrast maybe and what we'll do is we'll push out the light here by going with the whites you see that see the difference that makes yeah and that's the same as doing in levels on that area inside in photoshop you're just pushing the whites we might just soften this a smart bit. Okay, that's it. I'm going to look at the overall uh, exposure. Uh, what I might do is I say I'm, the blacks, we might just take out the deep blacks. Just move the deep blacks slightly. Mm. Um, you can also work up here on most of the sliders that are on the first row. So you can adjust the exposure. So you can see the exposures in the middle. You can adjust the shadows, uh, the blacks. You have the whites and you have the highlights. So you can actually pull the histogram from there. Push it. What I might do is I might put a, a radial filter in there and push the whites see how it works mm. maybe small bit so yeah that's about that there i'd say to be honest um before and after <clears throat> has color grading any role here rodney or pardon tom color grading has it any um hmm, color grading so let's just have a look at maybe the good question the uh, the, the, the shadows so we would introduce a bit of blue and how much of that blue then would we introduce that's changed hasn't it slightly mm, that's not bad it does throw a different dimension to the building especially the one here on the right What about a mid-tone? No, the mid-tone is doing the sky anyway. It can't be a mid-tone. The highlights, say if you were to give the highlights a bit of yellow, you can see what it does to the highlights. Now. Probably ruin the yellow there, do you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of colour there does. You have to be very careful with it. Yeah. And what do those sliders underneath the circles do, Rodney, then? So that's the brightness values of the shadows. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the same with the mid tones. Yeah, that's kind of made a job of the sky. Uh, what I would say to you, if, if you make um, an image and you color grade it and it looks nice go over and make a preset of it straight away do you know because it'd be very hard to replicate it you know? yeah, yeah. it it would actually be worth going in and making a few presets and having them over here color grading you know and yeah. you can just you can just come along and you can tip each you can tip them do you know uh like i actually have a few made here um i actually don't know what they're going to do now but we'll just we'll apply them uh i have a few of them made there over time and uh, I had an image now that they could work on. I'll go with that one. So I have a few here. Um, I have a few that I bought as well, of course. So Harris. So these are ones that I've made from. So, and then you have a preset up here. You you have a preview up here of the preset of what's going to happen. Do you know if that makes sense? In top top left. Well, it's actually previewing inside as well. That's not bad. So, I mean, there's a starting point over. And you can see what it's done then if you go in here and click on this. It's only applied at a, a mass top and bottom, a gradient, you know. Rodney, would it be an idea to show people um 
the targeted edits drop down menu for presets? Targeted edits. Um, or masks. So do you know the two little arrows next to custom? Uh, when you open up um your masks, see there's oh, two tiny arrows. Oh over here. Oh, oh no, drop down. So see where it says um uh where your sliders are. If you could come down, come to your right. Go into right. the main see it says custom there next to the drop down box. Where your sliders are. They said reset side. Go up, go up, go up, go up. See yeah. where it says recess. Um, sliders automatically. There's custom written above it with two tiny little arrows. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it, yeah. Oh yeah, they are kind of yeah. So they are kind of presets as well. Yeah. Um, um, I find them very handy. Yeah. Um, I very rarely use them, Henry. I yeah. think once or twice. I think I used the dodge and the, and the burn. Um, what we might do is we might just we might get into them a bit later if that's okay. Yeah. I I didn't see you sneaking in there, Todd. Um, I normally use this for the army reserve. I had to change my name because of a sergeant O'Brien. Ah, I see that. All right, okay. I was wondering who it was. So, we do have a sergeant, nearly kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, that's Henry O'Brien, there, guys, from Blarney Camera Club. Um, you'll see Henry posting there every day of the every day of the year. Henry, I think, isn't it? Uh, I think it's just under eight years at the moment or something on the trot. I still do. Um, I want you know, Henry. I don't know enough about that to go into it. If that's okay. Oh yeah, they're absolutely brilliant. I yeah. spend fifty percent of my time editing in there. Yeah, I'd be bluff if I went in there. No, I'd honestly, yeah. I'd, I'd be bluffing, and that's the truth of it. Um, and I just, I'll just probably just quote what I, I suppose what I, what I know, and yeah. uh, but uh, feel free to post the video somewhere for people. Um, um, I just, I must have uh, wrote about forty or fifty presets. Okay. Either. Um so every time I do a sky or um a gradient or um a detail one, it's you can literally put it on the spot where you want it. Yeah, okay, very good. Um and I think that again you were just kind of demonstrating there, that's the beauty of you know editing. We're all so different, you know, which is great. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm just going to have a look at this one. Uh thanks, Henry. So there's about a half an hour left there now. Does any, would anyone like anyone like to come in? Does anyone want to say anything? Feel free. As I said, it's going to be uh it's it's recorded and I'll send out the um we will send it. So what we will do, um I'd like to just send it out to the people who have attended. So if you could um I don't want to go sending it out to the whole newsletter when the whole newsletter don't don't want to see it. Um, so if you could maybe just is any cat, if you just want to contact me and um, I'll send it out to uh, whoever looks for it. Okay, thanks, Rodney. No matter. So, so this is uh, the Isle of Harris, and it's on Lusk and Tara Beach, and the tide has gone out, and I suppose the sun is going down, and we're looking for um. You know, looking for something strong in the foreground, I suppose, to carry us through with this lovely reflection that's in the sky and uh, through to the distant hills there. So, um, as you can see, the exposure is pretty good. Um, probably the first thing I'll do is I'll just bring down the highlights a little bit. That's already been done, actually. I'm going to look at the color. OK. Um, so as shot, auto. Um, again, I'm just going to go in and push the vibrance and push the saturation to see where the color actually is. Um, I might try and introduce a little bit more war yellow where the blue is. Sorry, no, the cat is in there. I'm going to let the cat out. All right. I had a visitor all evening. <laughs> okay, so. I'm just going to push the white balance slider just, yeah. So I'm just getting a little bit more color in the sky there, a little bit more yellow, a bit less blue. And we'll reset that. And that's pretty neutral. Um, Tom raised his hand. Are you okay there, Tom? Yep. I'm just getting a note. Okay. So, um, right. What am I going to do? I, I, I want to draw the viewer's eye here. 
So I went to, I, primarily that's where I went. That's primarily. So we take down the exposure just to see what the story is. So if we take it down to there. And now we highlight this area. And I highlight it with gradients. So it's kind of conical shaped. And we just push the whites. Um, that happened there. Yeah. You push the whites. Just to highlight that area. And give it a little bit of clarity. Clarity is the one you must be careful of. So you can see it's standing out now. A little bit of black. Nope. Add the black after. Right. I'm going to do a. a so darken the sky slightly. Do a vignette just to see radial gradient, just to see invert it. That we're getting somewhere now. I'm gonna brighten that area again down here. Then. So I could brighten it with the shadows, but I'm just going to use the whites again. Enter. Maybe slight like crop. If you noticed, I haven't actually cropped many pictures tonight. Not something I do. Yeah, I like this cloud formation here, the way it kind of lovely kind of works. Um so what we could do is let's say we ran across there with a gradient. Again, it's all field, there's no and this is something you're gonna you know you'll only find out by doing it yourself. Um it's only you know what you want to do with your own images. I think I'd stop there and that's you know you have to know when I think you have to kind of know yourself when when you want when enough is enough do you know yeah uh, so yeah it's just nice and simple it just the the uh the patterns in the sand take you out to the cloud they take you onto the mountain and you're up onto the other cloud then you know and um, nice and simple I could say it's a little bit burnt out there but um on the histogram it's probably the only way of getting that back would be to do another, say, again, this is all down to the display, maybe. Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's fine for me. I, I'd be very happy. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not one that, I don't, I don't worry too much about highlights. You know, if it's in the sky, geez, you can't capture it anyway. If the sun is in the sky, you can't create a sun that's not burnt out. You know, it's, it's impossible. Uh, the iPhone will, all right. So, um, hopefully, um, yeah, um, that was one from the dark hedges. Uh, so, just to show you, um, this series of images here, what a difference it makes with somebody inside it. Um, again, I'd start with that one by you know having a look at. The contrast and how so have a look at the contrast slider and if it works for you then this is one now where the radial filter would work really well um say blacks and a white point now the first the only thing i haven't done here is i haven't done the color auto hmm. um 
think the strong color coming in was quite nice. So we'll bring it back. So technically, yeah. technically, no, I have a shot that has no color cast that has what's supposed to be white is white. And I can say, fine, okay, that's good. But we'll just introduce a little bit of the warmth back in. Um, we create a vignette around the subject. And we make sure that it happens outside. Right. And we take that down. And now we'll make another one inside. Very similar. And we push the whites. On the road, maybe. Oh, geez, that's gone too far. Again, see the histogram? Yeah. Gone. Absolutely gone. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop one, a very small one, on them just to see. And I'm going to uh, invert that just to see what happens. Like, no. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so you go too far. We have to know when to stop. Yeah. Maybe drop one in front. Be fair, image wasn't bad first day anyway. Um lovely. So I haven't added any color. I've 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 added the color through contrast. Yeah. You know, and I, I rarely use any of those sliders. Like let's have a look at this one. This is an image that I took on my way to the um by the Harris last year. So we were heading for the Bosch to get onto the ferry. Um, to cross over to Lewis and Harris and uh, we came across this lock that was very very still so to me looking at the histogram this is what I would say flat and I spoke about a flat image early on you know um, so let's just fix the color first step that's a big difference isn't it yeah that's very blue uh, mm -hmm. so what we'll do is we'll bring a little bit of color back in mm -hmm. Push the whites. Push the whites. And now we're getting that lovely color back in, so we need to be careful. Now, essentially, you can turn this on here, and it tells you when you're starting to push things too far. You can see in theory now, there's a little, there's a hot spot starting to come in the car there. But to be fair, the yellows are gone there, you know. Um, so I would say. Even that's a big improvement. We say we just take out a little bit of black. And um, this is where I come in. I'd use the, the linear gradient. I'd come up because any bit of contrast I'm adding there now is affecting that area. And I'll push the whites. And that lifts them down there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I do the same up here. We're kind of sandwiching that road. What I will say to people is for those that are kind of starting, you know, go in and just, you know, do get as much practice as you can and know what each slider does and you, you'll get a feel for sort of what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another gradient. I'm now going to darken the tops. I want to sandwich that little piece. Something like that. Switch it out. So we 
they push the dax like it the highlights yeah that's about it again just start point it is quite a fat yeah lovely and we now have lovely color and we didn't go near any sliders no uh, saturation slider but again it's how, how you want the image to be you know um it's how you want it to be uh this but one who's yeah you, come on there, um you were using the tone curve instead of your sliders just above that yeah, so the tone curve here, Tom, I suppose the darks, I was using the darks look. And you can see, okay. yeah, I was using the darks. It's it's like a mid-tone contrast. And, and is, that a, is that different to using the sliders up above that you were using? It is, there? yeah. I suppose you have no mid-tone slider here, look. Oh, you know, right. All you, all you have is, is you have an exposure slider. And what about the shadows and the whites then underneath that? But yeah, shadows I think are deep shadows and whites okay. are but you have no kind of mid-tone slider but I've kind of come to realize that if you watch now look it's only mid-tones so okay. see how you still have the dark shadows back there yeah so if I was to go with the shadows watch the windows see yes so this slider here it's like a mid-tone uh, no, in Capture One, they actually have a brightness slider, and the brightness slider is the mid-tone, um, okay. if that makes sense. Alternatively, if you wanted to go at the mid-tones, you could say you could do a, a mask on the whole, just do a whole gradient, and then you could just go here, look, up. Same thing. Mid-tones. Mid-tones, okay. Um... We're getting near the end of it now. Is anyone any questions there? Do you want to come in? Rodney, thanks, Vivian Corn here. Um hey Vivian, you're very welcome. Thanks a million. Um I'm a terror. I don't like editing and I need to edit and I need to start. But like tonight now I've learned an awful lot with the radials and the linear, the gradients and all those. I'd never use those, but it's amazing what you can do with them. It is, I suppose. It's very, I suppose, the hardest thing is to start, you yeah. know, and, you know, there's only so much you can do to an image with just moving the sliders. Yes, and, yes. You know, you, you kind of get stuck in because each slider you move affects another area that you might not want to affect. Yes. And it's just, I suppose, it's a great starting point, you know, and that's kind of my, um, what we might do the next, I'll do another one or maybe another, in a month, about a month's time, we'll do a Photoshop one because it was mostly Lightroom tonight. Yes. Uh, but, you know, that's the way to get started. Small steps, you know, and kind of set yourself, well, I want to darken the sky, I want to darken her face, or I want to brighten the foreground, you know, and just, just go in like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, basically. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to the recording, you know, because there's an awful lot just to yeah, retain. No. Sorry. Are you, Mary? Good, yeah, no, I just said the same as what you were saying there, Fanula, you know, about the radial filters, like, it's so yeah. easy to use them. Whereas I kind of had a block about using them, so there's yeah. a lot of learning in it. So I'm delighted. Yeah, good. No, we'll um, we'll look. We'll send that out uh, tomorrow. Yeah. I'll probably just have to send it out in the whole newsletter to 300 people. Uh, but you all, you're all, you all got the invite anyway, didn't you? So if you got the invite, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, I'm in Norway now next week. So when I come back from Norway, or maybe in about a month's time, I might look at doing another one. That'd uh, be great for great. Photoshop. Um, I hope. Um, I hope I didn't lose anyone. I know how hard it is that when you're, when you're not kind of proficient in something, that you can get lost very easily. Um, but you can go back and look at the uh, recording, you know, and um, just go in with a very blank image. Go in with something that's very flat and lighten and darken and brighten to see how you can shape it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I think. I think the the. I think that I really got tonight is to have some view of what you want from the picture and what yes. you want from the editing. You know, that's me. You'll get that now. Um, you'll get that now if you kind of go forward with a process and you can make yeah. the process your own. You can go off in different yeah. directions, you know. But just have a view of where you want to go with the picture. Yeah. 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 Give it an exactly. idea, you know. Yeah. It's all about practice, isn't it, Rodney? 
it is and just you know and I suppose look I enjoy editing I don't sit down and I'm not tormented by it you know I love to sit down and you know an image that you you could say we're not cheating we're not we're not doing anything that I suppose is not going on in our head that we want to see mm -hmm. you know so you're you're not cheating uh, Jane really helpful you're very welcome Jane thank you you're 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 just being creative you know and mm. You know, the more you kind of sit down and create in here, when you're out mm. in the field, then you kind of say, I have an idea now. I'll take this photograph, you know, and it kind of one complements the other, you know. Yeah. What um, about the AI editing? The what? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, look, it has its place. It, it, ha it has its place for people. Ken Collins. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Marion, you're very welcome. I think that's cheating now, isn't it, Rodney? Um, I suppose, I, I, I suppose the people who use AI might say, well, that's not what it looked like, you know, to us. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I suppose the problem with AI is if you're using parts of images that have belonged to something else. Yeah. You know, yeah. then you should declare, look, it's not my image. I got this from here. I got that from there. And if you declare it, fair enough. But I think the problem is then what's happening is people aren't declaring anything, you know. Mm. And um, that that's the issue, you know. Yeah. Uh, Pawning stuff off that they're saying is theirs, but when in fact the whole bloody world knows it's AI, you know. Yeah. Annette, you're very welcome, Annette. Um. So yeah. Um. That's it. Um. What time is it? Ten. I didn't do bad there. No, an hour and fifty minutes without. Very good. Very good. That was really good. Yeah, that was great, Rodney. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Very much. Thanks very much, Rodney. Yeah, you're Thank very you very much. much yeah. You're very welcome. So I will um so we'll just close it off at that and I'll I'll forward the um France ten or one eye and the one eye in each. So France so we're, we're behind half time. Oh no, we're ahead. We're ahead. Mm. Uh, well ahead. Yeah. So and they're down to fourteen. They're down they're down to they're down a yeah. minute. Yeah, they're down a man, they got a red card, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rodney. You're very welcome, Brenda. Yeah. I, I hope it gives you Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thanks very much. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rodney. See you soon. Yeah, see you right now. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you very much, Rodney. No, You're very welcome, Yeah. Yeah. How are you, yeah. David? You're very welcome. Rodney, <laughs> Rodney, what's the latest version of Lightroom? Um, it's the one I'm running there now, Tom. Um, yeah, because so, some of those aren't coming up in mine. Okay. Have, are you on the um? Are you on the subscription? I am. Yeah. Yeah. You. You, you, just, need, you just need to um, to download to. So okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop the recording there now. Actually, okay. Just have your updater on, Tom. You know, automatic updates. Yeah, it, it normally does. For some reason or other, I'm just missing out on one or two at the moment. Stop recording. <laughs>